Yo, it's Brad from Sub FM recording from the Jazz Festival. I'm here with Chris Burke, um, radio producer, songwriter, and journalist, and now author. Just here to talk to him about his book, Blue Smoke. Would you give us a summary of what your book's about? I know it's quite a long, epic book. Oh, it's the it's the history of the early days of popular music in New Zealand. Uh, the pre-rock and roll era, the 40 years before rock and roll. Um, I didn't go into the colonial era, which is uh, you know, Harlem songs and things like that. This is when jazz arrives just after the First World War, and uh, you had swing bands and in the 30s and 40s, and the Americans arrive, and we, we hear their wonderful bands, and the musicians get encouraged. And then after the war, recording starts with um, the song Blue Smoke, which that's why it's the title of the book, it's the first uh, proper recorded song here, written and recorded here. Um, and then there was a boom in the 50s when records were called 78s. Um, and um, then suddenly in the mid 50s, the jazz players, they're in the cold because rock and roll's arriving. And so they have to find another outlet. Um, but suddenly then jazz is no longer the popular music because it keeps changing. It's been told to be the New Zealand Jazz Bible. What do you think of this statement? Oh, well, it's, that's, I hadn't heard that, so it's really nice that people are saying that. But, um, yeah, there's a lot in it, but I'm hoping that music students uh, from now on will find one little thing in it that really intrigues them. It might be you know, the story of one musician or the shift or how country music got yeah. off the ground, you know, and they'll do a thesis out on that one topic. So w what will emerge from from this are uh, lots and lots of um, theses and maybe yeah, other books yeah. by other students. Okay. And uh, supposedly there was some unattainable photos in this book. Are you going to give us your secret of how you got these photos? Oh, or oh well, is it just this a is Unattainable mm. photos. Uh, um, well, uh, it was just a price thing, really. I worked at The Listener 25 years ago, and uh, that's where I saw all of these photos early on. And But it's now um, uh, owned by a diff different company. It's not part of broadcasting, so, uh, so I just couldn't afford to pay what they were going to cost. So I went around to all the musicians that I'd interviewed over the years, and... Um, uh, sat on the kitchen table with my scanner and scanned. They usually had copies themselves, so I did a lot of miles to track down the photos. But um, yeah, that's the way it is these days. Um, archives will, uh, cost money to store, so they, so they, there's an ongoing cost. Okay. Um, for the people who missed out on your show today, could you, I don't know, give a little description of it? Oh, I wanted to. Um, I made it very much about the jazz because it's the Tauranga Jazz Festival. The festival's really started just as my book finished um, because with rock and roll arriving, the, big, the era of the big band's over as far as major gigs. Uh, so the Tauranga Jazz Festival became an outlet for them uh, to gather and still be able to play in that style and more avant-garde types of jazz. But I've also got the early history of country music in New Zealand. Uh, the Hawaiian sound, you know, steel guitars, and uh, it's like a this imaginary, idyllic South Pacific yeah. paradise. There's lots and lots of recordings with things like Hari Mai, Everything is Kapai, and uh, When My Wahini Does the Poi. Uh, so there's lots of other genres other than jazz uh, that come into the book as well. If your father or grandfather's got a really good scrapbook, make sure you look after it and uh, scan those photos so that they don't disappear. Scan them at a high resolution because they're just treasure. Yeah. Uh, and get the stories. In fact, that's what I'd suggest to the journalism students is interview your grandparents about <laughs> just everyday life when they were kids. It's a great way to uh, um, increase New Zealand's knowledge of its own history. That was Brad for Sub-FM at the Jazz Festival.